What's up, everyone? Welcome into Dodger Heads, presented by DodgerBlue.com, part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network. My name is Jeff Spiegel, joined today by Matthew Moreno, Scott Gearman. Guys, talking a couple around the fringes, admittedly, but some moves that the Dodgers have made of late. Uh, they add some fam familiar names. Cole Calhoun, Mike Montgomery, and Ryan Brazier all added to the team. Luke Williams, DFA'd by the Dodgers, kind of under the radar, not really on anybody's transaction log, and then claimed by the Braves, Matt Four moves here. Which one of these surprised you the most? I would say, you know, maybe Calhoun a little bit, just because I, when I did see news of him opting out, I thought, okay, you know, Dodgers have been struggling uh, with obviously their outfield depth, and so maybe they would take a flyer on him. But then I look, they, what they need is an outfielder who can hit left-handed pitching. Uh, and then I looked it up, and Cole Calhoun is not that answer. And I think what I just might have remembered was him coming up with a ton of hits uh, against the Dodgers. But, uh, you know, at, and I know we'll get into it. At the end of the day, all of these are just minor league additions, and so there's no risk involved with it. Yeah, Calhoun was the name that I'm probably most familiar with on this list because he's been around since 2012. Um, had some really good years for the Angels, 2014, 15, and 16. All three and a half war, roughly, seasons for a guy. Um, the last few years, though, have not been kind to him. Last year in particular, he played 125 games for the Rangers got 424 plate appearances and posted a negative 1.1 wins above replacement, a 67 WRC plus. So Calhoun, the name I was most familiar with, but you could make a case, maybe the least um, exciting of the bunch, Scotty Montgomery, Brazier, Luke Williams being DFA'd. What jumps out to you? Honestly, the fact that they added Mike Montgomery, he hasn't pitched uh, in quite some time, like in the major league since I think, 2020 when we looked yeah. up um last season with the Mets in their triple a he was really bad <laughs> okay I think in like 24 games he had like a six and a half or something era so dart throw but that one for me it's like what else do you have in the tank he's a 33 year old you know left-hander uh, almost yeah. you know, I almost think 34 so that one for me uh that's I don't know what you're gonna get there so just all dart throws just like yeah. minor league depth just in case anything um but I mean, I'd like to see what you get out of Ryan Brazier. That's interesting. Bullpen arm. What 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 last juice can you get out of that squeeze? Look, look we're all in favor of like just throw the darts and see what happens. Yeah. Montgomery is a dart though that like I don't know like whatever you had to pay to get whatever Mike Montgomery is making, it might actually not be worth that investment. A six point seven two ERA in twenty two appearances at AAA last year. He made two appearances at Single A and had almost a five ERA. Um, has not been in the major leagues, as you said, since 2020. He made three appearances in 2020. So really, he hasn't been in the major leagues for serious innings since back in 2019. Those two years, by the way, an ERA of five. The Williams move was actually the most surprising to me. Um, he was a guy that I joked during spring training, hey, could this be sort of the surprise utility infielder for the Dodgers? He doesn't make the team out of spring training, ends up in the minor leagues does get called up, doesn't really perform well. I hadn't kept a ton of track of him. He hadn't been performing well, but it just seems weird. Like, I know the Dodgers at some point will have a 40-man roster crunch. It didn't feel like they were necessarily there um, in, in order to get to a place. So that one surprised me. But let's talk about Brazier because I think he's if – he, if we all had to pick one guy on this list that might actually contribute to the Dodgers, it would be him. Yes, in part because of what happened last night with the Dodgers bullpen and the taste that is still in our mouth from that absolute disaster from them. But Brazier in 2020, so this season he's made 20 appearances for the Red Sox has been really bad. 7.3 ERA, um, not good. But just a year ago, 2022, he made 68 appearances through 62 innings. The 5.78 ERA is not great, but Matt, a 3.97 expected ERA, a 3.1, excuse me, a 3.61 FIP and a 3.49 XFIP that tells me that inside there somewhere might actually still be a competent major league pitcher. Um, the fastballs, you know, in the 95, 96 range. So I, I, I wouldn't be surprised, Matt, if two weeks from now, Ryan Brazier's on the major league roster. Yeah, I agree. I think maybe two weeks is a little bit generous. <laughs> we might be looking at something like a week to 10 days. Uh, yeah. But I, I agree with you. You know, there's, I think there's some characteristics there that the Dodgers could potentially tap into and, you know, maybe uh, help him improve. I think even his strikeout rate, either recently or throughout his career, is also you know something that's somewhat attractive. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's again like he's I. It's there's no risk to signing him, and 
given the state of the bullpen, you know, we're now sitting here in June and at the beginning of the year, like I think even two, three weeks ago, we probably would have thought that the bullpen would have ironed out some of the struggles that are still occurring at this point. And so if you're the Dodgers, like, you know, yeah, if you can get a lottery ticket and this one pans out for you, then it makes it easier come the trade deadline when you're, you know, prices are high and Andrew Friedman has openly said he hates dealing at that time because of what yeah. the, the teams ask for. And so if uh, Brazier can fill a need uh, and it's even if it's unexpected, then, you know, you take it and then you have one less concern. Yeah. So the positives with him last year, he was striking out more than a batter in an inning and just walking 1.88 per nine. Um, here's the flip side. The stat cast for Ryan Brazier is not great, guys. It's not great. In 2023, he is in the fourth percentile for average exit velocity, the first percentile for hard hit rate, the fifth percentile for expected batting average. The only number really here that's positive is somehow he has the, the one of the worst EVs and hard hit rates, and yet he's in the 90th percentile for barrel rate. Explain that one to me another time. I'm not sure. But even if you go back a year, we mentioned 2022, he seemed to be a little bit more successful, but the EV was still bad. Fifth percentile for average exit velocity last year, third percentile for hard hit rate. So I, I guess that's the, the downside here, Scott. But remember, we're talking about a guy who's a free agent at the beginning of June. And so none of this maybe should surprise us, Scott. Yeah, no, he's a big two pitch guy, fastball slider, mixing some sinker. I think that they, if they like his slider, it's been a plus pitch for him in recent years, without a doubt, you know, negative five run value last year. So that might be what they're trying to tap back into. His fastball is a problem though. Um, might be some sequencing or just, you know, try to tweak some things and you know, we'll see how they've done it. We've seen the Dodgers minor league staff really, you know, work with some pitchers and do some very different things to unlock something or get them right. And we'll yeah. see what they can do with Brazier. Uh, he's brought a lot to the table for Boston in recent years. And, you know, just like you said, it's been fairly recent that he was, you know, doing some good things that can get outs in the big leagues. So another dart throw, I'm, I'd be, I'm not going to say I'm happy about it, but I'm intrigued. He's the one that I, I said I was most intrigued about. Um, so we'll see. I, I do like that ad there. Yeah. Look, you know, hey, if there's a pitch that they're going to fix, it's the slider. Go ahead, Matt. The other, the other thing, uh, to some of his stat cast numbers, you could argue that with the state of the bullpen, he fits right in. So it should be no Jeez. problem. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, Louise. Doesn't Easy walk, Marino. doesn't walk, just, you know, doesn't, you know, doesn't walk, just gives up <laughs> rips. Okay. So I'll put you on the spot here. Cause I know Scott loves when I do this of these four guys, Matt and Luke Williams, I'm, I'm saying Luke Williams on the Braves. Do we hear a, any of these four guys? Do we hear about any of them at any point in 2023? Uh, yes. Okay. Are you going with Brazier? Or like, did, did I was just, I was just going to leave it at yes. I was hoping. Uh, yeah, I think, I think it's a. Can I do a tie between? I think Brazier oh and Williams God, only because God, I think, he's rubbing off think, on you. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> I think Brazier and Williams both make it up to the majors again okay. at some point this year. Scott, uh, Brazier. Yeah. yeah, I, I think Luke Williams. I, I, he would be second on my list, but I think Brazier is the only guy we hear from. So let us know again. They add Cole Calhoun, Mike Montgomery, Ryan Brazier, and Luke Williams is claimed by the Braves. So three additions, one subtraction for the Dodgers. Let us know in the comments below if you think any of these guys end up making an impact. Do you like any of these moves or do you say, who cares? It's not my money and doesn't matter. Doesn't hurt us at all. That's Matt. That's Scott. You can check out their stuff at Dodger Blue. Dot com. Of course, subscribe here on Dodger Blue 1958 on YouTube. You'll see them in a bunch of our videos every single day. Enjoy the rest of your day. And as always, go Dodgers.